Welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you are a chocolate lover and love chocolate cake, chocolate ganache, chocolate buttercream, and sprinkles, keep watching. I've got a recipe video for you that you do not want to miss. Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I pretty much take care of all things mom. In today's video, I am going to be sharing a chocolate on chocolate on chocolate cake for you guys. It is a chocolate cake, chocolate ganache, and chocolate buttercream. I've already tried to make this cake before, kind of taste testing and trying to find the perfect recipe for Juan's birthday, and my family loved it. It was fun to make. I was a little rushed, so I didn't get a chance to film it. So I figured I'd film it for you guys now. Now again, like I mentioned, I was making this cake in kind of preparation for Juan's birthday. I wanted to find like the perfect recipe, and I think I have. But then he changed his mind and he doesn't want, he wants a different cake for his birthday. So uh, I wasn't gonna just, you know, not show you guys this wonderful recipe. So let's get to it. So today I'm actually making a double batch. If you are making a single batch, which I will list everything below in the description box, you can get two nine inch cake rounds um, from one single batch. Since I'm doing a double, I'm gonna see exactly how many cupcakes I can get with one batch and we're gonna find that out together. So just kind of keep that in mind with today's video. I'm making a double, but a single batch will be listed down below in the description box. You're gonna need some vanilla, some salt, baking soda, baking powder, flour and sugar. You're gonna need eggs, cocoa powder. This butter is not for the cake recipe, but to butter the pans and then cover it with cocoa powder so they don't stick. Some buttermilk, oil, and some coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this out and I will check back in in a second. Alrighty then. Okay, so we've got our dry ingredients measured out and our wet ingredients measured out. So for a double batch, I used 440 grams of all-purpose flour, 130 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder, 700 grams of granulated sugar, four teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, and then one cup of vegetable oil, four eggs, four teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, two cups of buttermilk, and two cups of freshly brewed coffee. Now I got really nervous because I added in the coffee before the buttermilk and I was afraid it was gonna cook the eggs, but I whisked it up really quick and it doesn't seem to have any issues so far. So I would suggest if you're making this for yourself, put in the buttermilk before the coffee, that way you don't really risk scrambling the eggs in the wet mixture. But now we are going to transfer the wet mixture into the dry and just mix it all up. So I have my scale out here, this is not necessary. I'm just doing this for me to make sure I put exactly as much batter as what needs to be in the cake pans so that it resembles accurately a single batch for you guys. So don't worry about this, just pour the wet into the dry and we're gonna mix it. So this is a very runny mixture. I'm gonna wipe down the sides and just kind of give it a good beat, but don't be surprised if you think it looks a little too runny. It is very wet, it's very runny, but it comes out with a very light and fluffy and very moist cake. So don't worry so much about the way it looks right now. This is kind of normal. This is what you should expect. All right, now it's time to portion this up. I'm gonna preheat my oven now because it's just gonna take me a while because I wanna be super precise. We're gonna preheat to 350 and let's go ahead and portion this up equally among the cake pans and then the cupcakes. All righty then. Okay, so quick note. I measured what my bowl was before I put in anything, and it was 1,381 grams. And then once I added in all the ingredients, that measured out to 4,106. So that means my batter, my total batter for a double batch is 2,725 grams. And I'm dividing that by four because if I divided it in half, it would tell me how much batter I need for both of these. And then I'm dividing it in half again uh, to figure out how much batter I need just for one cake pan. So each cake pan is gonna get about 681 grams of batter. And then whatever's left over will be portioned out in the cupcakes. 
So as you can see, the amount of batter that needs to go in one nine inch cake pan fills it up about halfway. So if you don't have a scale, kind of shoot for half of the pan for each of these pans. like we're gonna get more than 24 <laughs> cupcakes out of this. Let me go get another pan. So the last time that I made these, I put them in the 350 degree oven for about 27 minutes and that was perfect. So since I'm using the same oven, the same recipe and everything. I'm just gonna set a 27 minute timer and take it out exactly at that point. But learn your ovens. If you guys have ovens that run hot or cold, make sure you figure that out because that is going to make a big difference in how your cakes actually bake. Now, I don't want to overwhelm my oven and put the cupcakes in now. So we're just gonna work on the cakes and I'm putting them in the middle, not too close to the heat up top and let it do its thing. are now out of the oven and I put in most of the cupcakes. So while the cupcakes are baking, we are gonna work on the buttercream. Now, when you want to make buttercream, you wanna make sure your butter is soft, but not like really squishy and easily like collapsible or mushy. So we just want to be able to like press into the butter, but still have it be a little firm, but leave kind of like a dent. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And then I will show you guys how to make the delicious ganache. So again, I am making a double batch. So keep that in mind as you guys are seeing the enormous amount of ingredients here. I'm making a double batch. The single batch recipe will be listed in the description box below. So for a double batch, we're gonna use five sticks of butter. There is a fifth one in there. Five sticks of butter. We have about 760 some grams of powdered sugar. There's a range here. So it's just kind of like use within that amount and until your taste buds agree. Uh, so this is kind of like some wiggle room. I have my powdered sugar still out in case I need more. We're gonna have some vanilla and cocoa powder. I'm using salted butter, so I'm not gonna be using um, any additional salt in this recipe, but if you use unsalted butter, you're gonna use a little bit of salt. And if necessary, if I need it to be more creamy, if it's too stiff, I'm gonna use some heavy whipping cream. So the first thing that we're gonna do is beat this butter. We're gonna whip it with a whisk attachment on our stand mixer. You can do this with the hand mixer, but it will take a while and your hand may get tired. So I like using the stand mixer for this one. It's gonna go from yellow to a very light pale yellow, kind of off-white, and it's gonna become very fluffy. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that the butter is whipped, we add in our powdered sugar little by little. I have these little attachments to kind of cover up the bowl so that the powdered sugar doesn't spray everywhere. I'm also going to use a towel to kind of drape over the machine to kind of cover the sprayed powdered sugar. If you don't have the attachments, you can also do this. You can saran wrap the whole thing. You really just don't want your powdered sugar flying everywhere. And so you pretty much do all that you can to kind of keep it consolidated. So once I add in my sifted powdered sugar, I'm going to add in about 80 to 100 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder and about two teaspoons of vanilla extract. If I use some heavy whipping cream, uh, I'll probably use about five to seven tablespoons worth. Okay, so now that the buttercream is made, it is delicious. It's time to make the ganache and decorate the cakes. So to make ganache, you want equal parts, heavy whipping cream and chocolate of your choice. I'm gonna use semi-sweet chocolate chips. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use my scale to make sure it is exact, but if you don't have a scale, again, you could just do like a cup of heavy whipping cream and a cup of chocolate chips. So the last time I made this, I did 250 grams of heavy whipping cream and 250 grams of chocolate chips, and that was a little too much. I think I had still some left over um, from decorating my cake, but this time, since I'm making a double batch, I am just gonna use up, I guess, the rest of my heavy whipping cream, and we're gonna make a little bit more than I made last time. And hopefully that'll be enough, and if not, some of the cupcakes just won't get some ganache. So it looks like we're getting about 270 grams of heavy whipping cream, 271. And I will just make sure that I put in equal parts of the chocolate chips when this is done dripping. Okay, so now that we have equal parts of both, we're gonna microwave this for 30 seconds and then kind of give it a little mix and then do another 30 seconds. And I think around that time, it will be warm enough for me to just mix with a hand mixer.
Juan had one of the first cupcakes, so what'd you think? It was delicious. What'd you like about it? Sprinkles. Chocolate <laughs> sprinkles. Yeah, so Juan had the one that looked like this, but I made a bunch of other designs just trying to use up the ganache. We did some crisscrosses. I did some like just dump ganache on top, some type of swirl. So, and these guys didn't get any ganache on top, but they were all filled with it. So there's gonna be a good bite in the center. I hope that after watching this video, you feel a little bit inspired to try this for yourself, especially if you are afraid of baking. Uh, the steps for the making the cake was really easy. Again, just mixing the wet and dry ingredients separate and then together baking it. And the decorating really isn't that tough. Uh, you, if you don't have any piping bags like I had, you guys can try Ziploc bags and just cut off the corner so you can make your own that way. And just try to branch out and take a risk and let me know how it went for you in the comments below. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately, my buttercream wasn't quite enough to do a bunch of decorations on top of the cake, but I made what I had work and I know my family is gonna enjoy it no matter what. They're coming over, so we're gonna demolish that cake tonight and the other cupcakes are gonna be frozen for future gatherings. And I will make sure to let you guys know how that all goes uh, in a future probably day in the life video. So stay tuned for that. Please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, my name is Emily from Lima Bean Living. Welcome, we are so happy to have you. We post videos every Monday and Friday on a variety of content, lifestyle, cooking, cleaning, military life, DIYs, encouraging mathematical development in children, and so much more. Thank you so much again for watching and until next time.